arguments in this section you will see a statement concerned with political social or economic issue then followed by arguments either in favor of or against the statement you need to analyze the statement then followed by the arguments in the context of the statement then finally decide which of the arguments is strong enough to support the statement to answer this section you should be clear about strong arguments and weak arguments strong arguments are those where the focus is on a major issue in the statement and weak arguments are those where the focus is on a minor or a trivial issue in the statement let's try a question statement are nuclear families better than joint families and the arguments are no joint families ensure security and also reduce the burden of the work just think about this the statement is posing a question whether you will go with the nuclear families or with the joint families and the first argument says we are not going with the nuclear families we are actually going with the joint families because they ensure security and also it reduces the burden of the work and in fact this is right if it's a joint family then there is more security and because the work will be shared between the people the burden of the work is also reduced therefore this is a strong argument now look at the second argument it says yes nuclear families ensure greater freedom now what do you think about nuclear families do they give the freedom yes obviously when there are no people then you are free to do what you want to do so even this is strong let's try one more question statement should only one company be allowed to run the transport system in any one big city the statement is talking about monopoly that is a single company which is handling everything in a system now look at the arguments the first argument says yes this will put an end to unhealthy competition among different companies now look at the second one no the commuter should be given a wider choice of the transport system so you are talking about a wider choice now what do you think if we go by monopoly definitely there is no unhealthy competition but the problem is these guys whoever will handle the transport system can increase the fares they can become rude or maybe it some day they can completely stop the transport system which is actually bad for the commuters so therefore this is not a proper argument the second one is suggesting we should go for the commuter's choice that is giving more options to pick up which is better than the first one so this is stronger one here are few tips to handle these type of questions the first tip arguments with unjustifiable assumptions are weak to understand this i'll give you an example here we have a statement should the education at all levels be offered only in vernacular medium here vernacular means a local medium suppose you are from north india probably hindi or maybe from south it could be telugu tamil or maybe kannada and so on so they are suggesting that at every point in your education you should learn only in your local language that is what the statement is now coming to the arguments the first argument is yes this is the only way to enhance performance of the students the second one is no this will severely affect acquiring knowledge and constrain students from exploring new domains so they are saying that it will affect and also puts constraints on the students the first argument is talking about performance which is basically an assumption we are not sure whether it will increase the performance or decreases the performance therefore going by assumptions doesn't make any sense so this is weak argument now look at the second one whether putting it into vernacular medium does it affect acquiring knowledge yes if you constrain the student only to take in local language there could be few people who may be preferring a uh, general language like english so we are putting constraints which is actually correct therefore this is strong so never go by assumptions the second quick tip is if an argument contradicts your general knowledge it is weak statement should books by only deserving authors be published arguments yes it will save a lot of paper saving paper which is short in supply second one no it's not possible to draw a line between deserving and undeserving now just think if you restrict the books to the deserving authors does it save the paper no 
because even then you need to publish which consumes the paper. So, which is going against your basic general knowledge. Therefore, this is weak. We cannot go by this. Now, look at the second one. It is not possible to draw a line between deserving and undeserving, which is actually true. You don't know whether a particular author is actually deserving or not deserving. You cannot directly analyze an author's capabilities. Therefore, this is stronger. And here we have the third quick tip. Arguments that are illogical and unrelated to the statement are weak. Look at the statement. Should all the school teachers be debarred from giving private tuitions? The statement says that if the teacher is teaching in the school, they are not supposed to go for private tuitions. Now look at the arguments. No, the needy students will be deprived of the expertise of these teachers. So the first argument says that if you ask them not to take any private tuitions, then the needy students will be deprived of these teachers, which is actually wrong because if you restrict them from the private tuition, still they are working in the school. So through the school, the needy students can take advantage. Therefore, this is weak. The second, yes, this is an injustice to the unemployed educated people who can earn their living by giving tuitions. So here they are talking about unemployed educated people which we are not concerned about. We are only concerned about school teachers who are employed. And this argument is talking about unemployed people, which is not relevant to the statement. Therefore, this is also weak. Third, yes, only then the quality of the teaching in schools will improve. Now, if you look at the statement, why would the school teachers be restricted from private tuitions? Probably they are not teaching well in the schools and they are putting more efforts in the private tuitions. If you stop the private tuitions, then they might put better effort in the school. So this particular argument is strong. So by restricting the private tuitions, which can lead to an improvement into the schools. So this is the right answer. I hope you are able to become the concept. Just keep one thing in mind. Don't go by your personal assumptions. Always restrict your thought process to the core idea given in the statement. And I'm sure you will solve every question from this topic. All the best.